Well, hey friends, how are you today? It's Rhonda. I'm so excited to be back with you. And we're gonna talk about having a team and why having this team, I'm gonna move my camera just a little bit, why having this a team is so important, but what happens when your team is not working out? and you cannot figure out whether they stay, whether they go, and, and the situation really, let me back up and give you some context. So many years ago, when I first knew I needed to hire my very first staff person, and I was just, I, it just made me so anxious. I just was like, I can't even believe this is happening. I gotta hire somebody, I'm gonna have to pay them, I'm gonna have to pay taxes, I can't afford it, I'm just a solo practitioner. So I jumped through all of those hoops and finally I knew that I needed some help. I needed, I needed a front desk person. So I, I put an ad out and I hired this young girl and I was in angst that I was gonna have to pay her $12 an hour. I mean, this was back in the day. I just was like, Oh my gosh, I just can't even believe that this that I'm going to have to pay $12 an hour. It's going to not going to be able to afford it. And so I hired this young girl and she just didn't really work out. She just was slow, she was on her phone, she she just didn't work out well. She she was shopping online when she should have been doing other things. Now that's my fault. That was 100% my fault for not managing and setting those expectations. However, as I, you know, I let her go, and so then I hired somebody else, and I kind of had the same problem, and I let her go, and finally, I kind of started to realize, oh, hey, I think this is a me problem. I think this is my problem, and so then I knew that I was going to have to figure out how to, A, set the right expectations for my team, but then when they didn't work out, how was I, how did I know that they weren't going to be a good fit? And how was I, how could I let them go and do it in a graceful way? Because for me, I'm always looking for ways to protect the relationship. That's what I want. I want to protect and maintain relationship. I don't want to be mean. I'm never going to do the wrong thing. I'm always going to do the right thing. And the right thing is honoring the person. So it just wasn't a good fit. And probably because I wasn't being a great leader, right? So one of the things that I finally realized is the way that you know whether an employee is a good fit for you and for your company, your team. Now I'm talking to you like this is with your business owner CEO hat on, okay? I don't want you to think about this like clinician because as clinicians, we get like, we're like, oh, well, she's so nice and you know, I know she has trouble at home or she's a single mom or whatever. And we start, we start running a business from our heart, which I'm not saying don't do, but we'll never make the best decisions when we have our clinician hat on. We need to take that hat off, <clears throat> put, the, put the superpower, high achieving CEO hat, like I'm the boss, I'm running a business here for Pete's sake. I have to file a tax return, it's a business. So I wanna make sure that I've got the right people on my team, and I always talk about it like being on a bus. The bus is my business, and I need the right people on my bus. Now, sometimes you just gotta move them around in the seats a little bit. Like maybe the job they're doing isn't the perfect job for them. But nonetheless, we gotta hit the right people on the bus. How do you know if someone on your bus, one of your employees, is not going to be a good fit? There's a super simple way that you can find out. And how you do that is you ask yourself this one question. Now, this is with your CEO hat on, okay? You cannot ask this question if you have your clinician hat on because you're gonna give a different answer. With your boss hat on, you ask this question, would I fight to keep this person if they quit? If they gave me their two week notice, would I do everything I can to keep them? Like talk about money or try and find them a different seat on the bus or would I fight to keep them or would I accept their resignation and let them go? Which one would it be? Would you fight to keep them or would you let them go? That, if you answer that question and your answer, whether you would fight to keep them or let them go, will tell you whether they're a good person on the bus, if they should be on your business bus at all. If they shouldn't be on your business bus, then bye-bye, see you later. They're not the right fit. Like the first few people that I hired definitely should not have been on my business bus. 
maybe they would have worked out had I set better expectations, but I didn't know. And what you didn't, you know, you learn experience is just from really bad, ex good, good experience comes from bad experiences. And that was one of them. So when you're thinking about your team, whether you hire someone, you're hiring someone, or you're thinking about, oh, is this working out? Ask that question. If they gave me their two week notice, would I fight to keep them or would I let them go? And that answer to that question is gonna tell you whether they belong, if they're really a good fit in your business. Now, how do you let them go? That's kind of the second part. So how do you let them go? The less you say, the better. As clinicians, put, now we got a clinician hat on, we always wanna talk about it and we wanna like, well, you know, you're really an awesome person and I've loved getting to know you. And, and, and we start talking, 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 because we're uncomfortable because it's awkward and we're uncomfortable. That's not a good way to do it. It doesn't ever end well. The better way to do that with integrity, I believe, is to sit down with the person and just get, uh, just be a straight shooter, get right to the point and say, you know, I, I wanna let you know, I don't think at this time that you are a good fit for us. And so effective today, this will be your last day, um, we'll be cleaning out your desk and I've got your final paycheck ready. And um, I just think I wish you the best. I hope that your future endeavors, you know, take you where you want to go and that you can find somewhere to work where it is really more cohesive with who you are. And I just wish you the best. And you just send them off with grace and love and don't make them wrong. Because what we want to do is we want to say, well, you didn't do this and you didn't do this and you didn't do this. My, my husband has the best saying. He says, when he hired someone and he, he ran a big company and he had 80 employees and he said every time he hired him and he was the person who hired every single one of them because he said I wanted to develop relationship with him. He never outsourced it to anyone. But he said during the interview, he said, I will never fire you. You will fire yourself. And that is so good. I will never fire you. You will fire yourself. And so when you sit down with that employee, they know. They already know. You don't need to go on and on and on about all these things and stuff. They already know. You just sit down, get right to the point, say what you need to say, let them know they're not a good fit, but you wish them well and you hope that they, their future endeavors are going to serve them well and be done. And they'll ask you, you know, well, what, what did I do? What did I do? You can make the choice whether you want to bring that up, but what you don't want to do is get into what I call a pissing match right? You're getting a verbal back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then it's an argument. And now emotions are charged. You don't want to get the emotions in there. So first ask the question, if they give your notice, will you fight or will you let them go? And then the second thing is, if you do need to let them go, let them go with grace and integrity and wish them the best and don't, and let say less, less is more when it comes to dealing with tough employee situations. So that's all I've got for you this week. I hope you have an awesome week. Go run your clinic like a boss, my friend. Put that CEO hat on and go be the boss of your clinic. You can't run your clinic as a clinician. You've got to run it as a CEO. So I'll be back inside the Facebook group, Grow Your Wellness Business. It's a free Facebook group. You can go there. If you're not in, please join me over there. Otherwise, I will see you next week, same time, same place. Take care, my friend. Talk to you later.